Hi guys, Style662 here, going to show you how to do a long range scope setup for long range shooting. Uh, I'm going to go through basically uh, how to get some good range data or dope data and then how to set up the scope so that you can see uh, where you're shooting at whatever distance to, and accounting for the drop. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you need to get some accurate um, bullet data or ammunition info. And you can get some of that just by the box of ammunition that you bought or that you're using in your in your rifle or pistol for that matter. Um, but the main things that you want to take note of or you want to get the feet per second uh, that should be on the box. Um, you need to get the ballistic coefficient or BC and that you can normally find by uh, looking it up on Google, looking up the specific ammo or specific bullet. Uh, and once you have those things, and oh yeah, the bullet weight, or BW, we'll say bullet weight, and once you have those, then you want to try and get some more information so that you can plug it into a ballistics calculator online. So you're going to be mainly looking for atmospheric, uh, scratch that, atmospheric conditions. And you want to get these, they don't have to be right on, but you want to get them as close as you can to what you'll be shooting in. And that involves the temperature, the humidity, and sometimes the altitude at which you're shooting at. So these will all factor into the ballistics calculations that you'll enter in online. And I'll provide some links to a few good ballistics calculators that are out there. Uh, basically ones where you just enter in all this info that you've collected and it'll spit out uh, ballistics data for how much drop that round, particular round, will have at a certain distance. And then you're going to use that to set up your scope for long range shooting. So after you get your ballistics data plugged into one of the uh, ballistics calculators that you found online, then you're going. To, that's going to spit out something like this, like a chart that says the range probably in yards. Uh, this one's particularly for a 22 at since I was shooting long range at 5, 6, and 700 yards. And the drop here, it'll say that among other things sometimes, but mainly the important thing is the drop. At 500, the drop is 574.4 inches from uh, the bore line. And then we're going to use in particular 600 since that's what my previous video was of, and the drop for that was 888 inches. So now comes the important part, setting up the scope to account for 888 inches of drop. And here I'll show you how we're going to do that. So we're going to start out with a simple triangle, just draw your triangle here, and then on the top you're going to write the yardage that you're shooting at. So if you're shooting at 600 yards, you're going to put that up there. Then on the right side, you're going to put the amount of bullet drop that you're going to experience that you calculated uh, from the ballistics calculator. 888, what was it, 0 0.1 inches of drop. And But you're going to have to make your units match. So you're going to have to uh, either convert all to inches or convert all to yards. So let's just use all inches. So 600 yards we're going to multiply that times 3 for 3 feet in a yard and then multiply that by 12 for 12 inches in a foot and then that's going to equal a total of 21,600 inches on top here and 888.1 on this side and then this angle here is the important angle we're going to call it theta and that's going to be our angle of drop. And what's interesting is if you carry these lines in the triangle through a little bit, so you can see this. This is going to be the same angle, the same theta, except this angle will be our scope angle, the thing we're trying to find. is this will be the angle that the scope needs to be for uh, to see where we're impacting downrange to account for all the bullet drop. And this line right here on top is the LOS or line of sight. 
the idea here is that if you shot a laser down the bore of the weapon, uh, this is where the laser would be pointing at 600 yards. Obviously, perfectly straight and level. But then when you account for the 888.1 inches of drop, then you get something a lot lower. So you need your scope to be looking at that 888.1 inches lower than, uh, than the LOS on top here. Now we're going to find theta. If you know any trig, it's pretty easy. I'll just give you the f finished equation, though. You're basically going to do the inverse tangent of uh, drop, the bullet drop, 888.1 inches, over the distance that you're shooting. And once we do that, we're going to have the inverse tangent of 888.1 over 21,600 inches. That's going to equal when we divide this and then take the inverse tangent equals 2.35 degrees and that's going to equal theta. So now we know that we want to try and get our scope to be as close to 2.35 degrees as we can. Tilted 2.5 degrees down so that we'll see the bullets impacting uh, in our scope. The next step is now we want to use that 2.35 degrees and we want to see how we can get that on our actual rifle. And this Now you'll have to get your rifle, get the scope, and start taking a look at them. So the first thing you want to figure out is, let's say this is the top of your rifle, okay, and let's say here's your first scope mount, and here's your second scope mount. So you need to figure out the distance between the centers, or the distance between the exact center of the rear scope mount and the other center of the front scope mount. So you want to measure that, and once you measure that, let's say uh, in one case it was 125 millimeters. So now we're going to find, uh, set up another triangle and figure out how much height we need in the back of the scope mount to get that scope to be 2.35 degrees angled downwards. So we're going to set up another triangle. Let's draw this out here. The bottom line will be even with the the uh, the bore or the LOS. And here's our triangle here. And then this is going to be theta or our two point, what was it, three five degrees. And we need to find x, this distance right here. This is going to be the height that the rear sight needs to be uh, higher than the front. And this is pretty easy once we know the distance between these scope mounts, which we knew is 125 millimeters. Once again, we're just going to use a little bit of trig and that equation is going to be tangent of the angle, the scope angle that you want to get as close to as you can, multiplied by the distance between scope mounts. And so if we use our numbers, it's going to be tangent of 2.35 degrees and that number multiplied by the distance between the scope mounts which was 125 millimeters and that will spit out a number which is the number of millimeters higher that we want the rear uh, the rear mount to be than the front mount and that comes out to be 5 millimeters Now the easiest way to go about getting that 5 millimeters is, have, is to have an adjustable um, scope mount, like a riser block that would go underneath the scope mount uh, to raise it up, or using shims of some sort. Uh, and if you can do that, you can get very close to 5 millimeters pretty quickly and pretty easily. Um, if you're not exactly at 5 millimeters with a certain riser block or a certain um, shim uh, based on this equation, if you have if you can adjust the distance between the two scope mounts then that can effectively change uh, the amount of angle that you're getting off of any 
um, any height difference that you've already put in. So if you move, let's say you have a few millimeters of uh, rise in the back, that are the back's a few millimeters higher than the front. If you move those uh, scope mounts closer together, you'll get more of an angle from that. Uh, and then if you move them further apart, you'll get less of an angle. So you can kind of fine tune it uh, with the distance that the scope mounts are from each other to get a little bit closer to that exact five millimeters. It doesn't have to be exactly on all the time um, because as long as you get close uh, you should be seeing the rounds impact and then you can just use the clicks or adjustment on your scope to you know perfectly zero. And your ballistic set isn't going to be perfect either but this will get you ballpark uh, in the area so that you can have a pretty good chance at seeing where you're impacting uh, through the scope uh, almost right off the bat if you have good data and a, a good setup. So there it is guys, uh, trying to set up your scope for long range shooting. If you have any questions, just put it in the comments and I'll try and uh, get them answered. Thanks guys, bye.